Welcome to the Oneida Herkimer Madison BOCES Annual Awareness Training for Mental Health Part 2. This annual training is required for all school employees. In this section, we will discuss disorders of mental health and mental illness and who to turn to for assistance when needed. Although this section discusses these disorders, it is not meant to be a diagnostic tool or a replacement for training from mental health professionals. Disorders discussed in this training include obsessive compulsive disorders, psychotic disorders, eating disorders, substance abuse disorders, mood disorders, personality disorders, anxiety disorders, behavioral disorders, suicide behavior, and trauma and stress-related disorders. Obsessive compulsive disorder is a disorder characterized by repetitive actions that seem impossible to stop. There are times when medical attention is usually recommended by healthcare providers. OCD is very common, affecting more than 3 million cases per year in the United States, and is treatable by a medical professional. OCD can last several years or be lifelong and is common for ages 18 to 35. A family history of OCD may increase its likelihood. In a vast majority of these cases, the person is very aware that these behaviors and thought are irrational. Psychosis is not a mental illness, but a symptom of mental health conditions, including schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, and depression. It's more common than is normally discussed and can be very scary and disorienting for the people experiencing it. Many contributing factors can lead to a psychotic episode. These factors include, but are not limiting to, genetics, trauma, substance abuse, physical illness or injury, or other mental health conditions. The symptoms can include issues of delusion and paranoia, hallucinations, the inability to concentrate, losing attachment and bonds with family and friends, and suicidal thoughts. The symptoms of eating disorder may vary depending on the type of disorder an individual has. These may include anorexia nervosa, bulimia nervosa, and binge eating disorders. Other eating disorders may include rumination or avoidance or restrictive food intake disorder. Most eating disorders involve focusing too much on your weight, body shape, and food. Eating disorders have one of the highest risks of death of any mental illness. Drug use affects people from all walks of life and all socioeconomic statuses. Whatever the reason a person starts taking drugs, whether recreationally or as prescribed, tolerance, patterns of increased use, physical dependence, and ultimately addiction may develop. Affective disorders are a set of psychiatric diseases also called mood disorders. The main types of affective disorders are depression, bipolar disorder, and anxiety disorder. Symptoms vary by individual and can range from mild to severe. Some common symptoms of mood disorders include, but are not limited to, feeling or appearing sad, tearful, or irritable, not enjoying previously favored activities, spending less time with friends or in activities they enjoy, changes in appetite and or weight, sleeping more or less than usual, caring less about school, and having thoughts of suicide or dying. Additional symptoms of mood disorders may include, but are not limited to, feeling like everything is their fault and they are not good at anything, less care given to grooming and personal hygiene, feeling tired or having low energy, and having difficulty concentrating. Personality disorders are a group of mental illnesses that involve long-term patterns of thoughts and behaviors that are unhealthy and inflexible. There are a number of different personality disorders. Children and teens 
who do suffer from personality disorders typically have problems maintaining healthy relationships and often blame circumstances or people around them for the problems they have created. Every person experiences anxiety at some point of time in their life. For example, during an examination or an interview. This may last for a limited period. It is classified as an anxiety disorder when the symptoms are recurrent and last for a longer time. As with OCD or obsessive compulsive disorder, the person is usually very aware that their thoughts and fears are irrational. However, the feeling of dread and physical discomfort they feel is very real. Symptoms of anxiety disorder can include, but are not limited to, restlessness, increased heart rate, chest pain, dry mouth, hot flashes or chills, sudden trembling, dizziness, avoidance of situations that may cause fear, obsessions and compulsions, a sudden feeling of panic and fear, uneasiness, nausea, cramps, sleep-related problems, either sleeping excessively or sleeplessness, cold or sweaty hands or feet, numbness in the hands or feet, and a shortness of breath. Behavioral disorders can be impulsive and disruptive to everyone around the person who experiences them. In recent years, this category of disorders has been expanded by including Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, also known as ADHD, Oppositional Defiant Disorder, also known as ODD, Conduct Disorder, Intermittent Explosive Disorder, also known as IED, and Disruptive Mood Dysregulation Disorder, also known as DMDD. Suicide, or taking your own life, is a tragic reaction to stressful life situations, and all the more tragic because suicide can be prevented. Whether you're considering suicide or know someone who feels suicidal, learn suicide warning signs and how to reach out for immediate help and professional treatment. You may save a life, your own or someone else's. It is imperative to consult a mental health professional if the personal safety of someone is ever in question. If someone is feeling overwhelmed by thoughts of not wanting to live or having urges to attempt suicide, get help now. Call 911 or your local emergency number immediately. In the U.S., call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at 1-800-273-8255 any time of the day. Someone can also text the crisis text line at 741741. Warning signs aren't always obvious and they may vary from person to person. Some people make their intentions clear while others keep suicidal thoughts and feelings secret. Some warning signs may include but are not limited to talking about suicide. For example, making statements such as, I'm going to kill myself, I wish I were dead, or I wish I hadn't been born. Getting the means to take your own life, such as buying a gun or stockpiling pills. Withdrawing from social contact and wanting to be left alone. Having mood swings, such as being emotionally high one day and deeply discouraged the next. Being preoccupied with death, dying, or violence or feeling trapped or hopeless about a situation. Additional warning signs of suicide may include increasing the use of alcohol or drugs, changing your normal routine, including eating or sleeping patterns, doing risky or self-destructive behaviors such as using drugs or driving recklessly, giving away belongings or getting affairs in order when there's no other logical explanation for doing this. Saying goodbye to people as if they won't be seen again. And developing personality changes or being severely anxious or agitated. 
particularly when experiencing some of the warning signs listed above. Trauma and stress-related disorders are a group of emotional and behavioral problems that usually arise from exposure to traumatic and stressful experiences. These disorders are serious psychological reactions that develop in some people following exposure to traumatic events. This may involve witnessing or being the victim of a situation that is actual or feared that could cause death or serious physical or emotional injury. For children, experiencing abuse and neglect early in life can be linked with a variety of negative outcomes for them later in life, including trauma and stress-related disorders. This concludes our Mental Health Awareness Part 2 training module. Thank you for taking the time to view this. And remember that although this section discusses these disorders, it is not meant to be a diagnostic tool or a replacement for training from mental health professionals. If additional information is required, please consult a mental health professional in your district or within your community. Thank you again.